Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Come on in. Come on in. I am. I just want to take a little moment to introduce myself. I am Kismet Gray. I serve as president for the Gamete Omega chapter of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are excited to bring you today's Lunch and Learn, and we want to hear from you. So in that chat, let us know where you are. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Put your city in your state because we want to hear from you. Also, we want to know if you're if you're thumbs up, if you're agreeing with it, thumbs down. Please use those reactions so we can see what's going on. We can make sure that our conversation is on point. We're reaching you and we're educating you on what's going on today. Today, Gamete Omega of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority is excited to partner with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana for this Healthy Eating 101 webinar. That means the bare basics, y'all. We're, we're starting at the bottom. I know some of us have been on this journey before. We've had a, you know, a little trip up or what have you. It's okay. Miss Catherine is here to put us right back on track. So without further ado, let's get into this mind-changing experience of healthy eating. Today, Ms. Catherine Langlois, registered dietitian from Blue Cross Blue Shield, will provide insightful information to help us jumpstart and restart our journey. Ms. Catherine? Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, so I am Catherine Langlois. I am one of the two dietitians here at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Um, I'm part of a care team here working with our social workers, our nurses, pharmacists, and we basically call the members and help provide education over the phone. Um, but I love doing these educational sessions and I feel like I can tackle a big group at once with a lot of this great information. So I have a fabulous slide deck with all kinds of information. And um, are we ready to get started? I think so. So I want to start off first, just kind right. of give us sort of an overview. So, you know, here in Louisiana, yes. we have very rich, very well seasoned food. You know, it's almost a, a part of our life. So we really want to know this. It's a little difficult. It's a little <laughs> mind changing. It's, so we just want to know how, how, how do we get started? What can we do? We need your perspective. We need you to help us take our hand and, and guide us through. <laughs> the one good thing is I can only talk to Louisiana members. So it is good because everyone I talk to tells me, listen, I don't know where you are, but I need to have my po' boys and my rice and my grape. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm in Baton Rouge. So come I'm on, with you. It's okay. Yes. So at least I work with Louisiana people because I understand that's where we're coming from. So um, hopefully with this information, you'll get the basics about portion control and like what foods are we want to incorporate more of. So again, I have a pretty big slide deck because I get excited and there's a lot to cover. So we're going to jump right in to some okay. true falls. Um, all right, let's go. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I just have two quick true false questions. And um, y'all can put in the chat, true or false, um, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatnot. So let's go to the first one real quick. Okay, whole wheat, whole grain breads, cereals, and pastas are lower in calories than the white versions of these foods. True or false? I don't, mm -hmm. I can't pull my chat up. Mm -hmm. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a mixture, but I do see a lot of false, but. You know, we were kind of raised that that was better. So I don't know. What is it? What we got? It's a, and it's a common question I get from people, which is why. Okay. So again, are whole grains lower in calories than the white versions? Okay. So the answer is da, 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 false as far. <laughs> well, next slide. Sorry. So we can go into the explanation. Um, so I will say the whole grains is not lower in calories, but there is benefits. So okay. it has more fiber, it has more nutrients, such, it, such as maybe more protein. So there is benefits to doing whole grain, brown rice, oatmeal, things like that. But just know if you're going to be doing the whole grain, it is not calorie or carb free. So looking at labels is still important. Um, it's a big thing we push, of course, with not only diabetics, because everyone can still watch that. So, um, but calories are pretty equal. However, fiber is better. So, all right, next true false. 
Brown eggs are more nutritious than white. True or false? Don't the brown mean they're farm fresh or something? Is that what that means? No? I don't know. Is it? See? Okay, it's, so confusing. I, it's mixed again. We got a lot of true. We got a lot of false. It we got depends on there as well. So okay. <laughs> I told y'all this was going to okay, be so mind changing. Okay. People were putting in answers. Okay. So it is... Ding, ding, ding. Okay, false. Mm. In the sense that it's not more nutritious, the egg itself does not change. It's still a yolk. It's still a white. It still contains the same amount of protein, calories. The difference in color from, comes from the different type of hens. So, um, yes, you might get some uh, farm raised or cage free or whatnot, but that doesn't necessarily or it doesn't change the nutritional value. So feel free to buy cheaper eggs. It doesn't have to be expensive. So don't fall for false claims, but it is dependent on the type of hen, not necessarily a change in the nutritional value. So can you, and I just, just a quick, just to make sure we're clear, because I know, I noticed that a lot of things were going to cage free or, you know, those kind of, uh, tag tag lines so is that also in relationship to the hens if they were cage-free birds versus you know the other kind cage I, I think it just really depends on what they're ingesting so like if it's like what they're feeding them so it's more okay. of the feed so okay. I'm not gonna lie I'm not sure how exactly it affects the egg itself but I think as far as the meat goes the actual the, for the chicken that way there may not be as some stuff that they feed them or cage free, they get to maybe roam and eat more natural grass and things like that. So okay. that's kind of some of the differences. And that's one of the differences with organic. So if you see organic fruit, I mean, the only difference is the pesticides are different, mm -hmm. but it's not that the apple content has changed. It still is a carbohydrate. Okay. It still has some calories, you know, it still okay. is a fruit, but mm -hmm. it doesn't, because it's organic, it doesn't necessarily take away or add anything nutritional. It just doesn't have as many pesticides on it. So I just buy regular and wash it. <laughs> okay, so that, so that takeaway for me, and just to make sure we're clear, people, let's not get hung up on organic versus inorganic or caged versus not caged or brown versus white. The, the root of it, and once, uh, once you get inside the shell or the skin, the, nutrition, the nutritional value is found there. Correct. Oh, right. Correct. Yeah. Mind so it doesn't have to be expensive to eat healthy because we don't have to do organic bananas. We're not even eating the peel anyway. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank All you. All right. So awesome. Yes. Okay. Sure, okay. sure, sure. All right. We're ready to go back. Sorry, my slide deck isn't up. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to first talk about some food labels food claims, then we're gonna go into a little bit with meal planning. So this is a quick picture of the old label versus new for a quick comparison about what has changed. It's gradually changed over the past couple years. Everything should have this new label now. And the next slide will point out a few things that are what's actually different in it. And sorry if y'all see me look into the side, my slides come up right here. My cameras right here. Okay. So the serving size is now bolder and bigger. Um, that's a big thing. People forget to look at the serving size. I always love giving this example when we were in a gas station one time with my husband and he was like, oh, this Otis Smuckenmeyer muffin is 250 calories. And I said, well, how many servings? He was like, oh, three for the one muffin. I was like, exactly. Like you gotta make sure to look at the servings in it because that can be really um, deceiving. So the serving size, the servings that are in it, and then they make calories bigger and bolder. Um, also the percent daily values have been updated. So over the years, of course, our portions have gotten bigger. So we're eating more fat, more salt, more protein. So some of the daily values have changed, which is more on the technical end, I guess. I mean, we so that kind of got updated. Now, added sugars are also included uh, with a few other vitamins. And they took off that like on a 
2000 calorie diet is this. And so they took off that extra on the bottom. But the biggest takeaways is I really like the calories are there big and bold and the serving sizes are there. So that's our new nutrition label. It'll tell you a lot about a food. And um, let's go into some of the claims though, whenever we're looking at foods. So reduced, well, let's talk about fat. Here we go. Reduced fat. What that means is 25% less fat than the regular item. So let's think about ranch dressing. So our regular ranch, and if we would have reduced fat, 25% less fat, light is 50% less of the original. And then the low fat is less than three grams per serving. So of course, everything still has some sort of fat in there. It's just compared to what the original was. So light, it could be something that was two grams of fat, could be something that was originally 10. So that kind of makes a difference on how much fat is still in it. But that's what the different labels mean. So okay, when we're looking one, at that, when we're looking at that, so yeah. how much should we pay attention to the reduction in the light versus regular? As a, well, you mean, well, it kind of just depends, I guess. I was about to say, well, wait, let me go to my salad thing and then I'll tell I'm you kind of what sorry. my note, I mean, so this, cause this is my train of thought. So this salad picture that'll be up next. So there's the pretty salad with the check mark that has, you know, avocado and egg and cucumber mm -hmm. and chicken. Of course we can drizzle some dressing on it. Mm -hmm. Now the other one that's covered in ranch. So even if we're doing a reduced fat or a light, if we're putting half a cup of ranch on it, mm -hmm. the calories and the fat will still add up. So again, I mean, I'm just going to make up a number, but if it's two grams of fat per tablespoon, because remember, if you look at the food label, it may say a hundred calories, two grams of fat per tablespoon. Well, this picture clearly has eight or nine or more, more tablespoons right, of ranch right. on it. <laughs> so that can really add up. So um, I feel like people think they can have more sometimes when it is the lower fat version, but Sometimes if they take out fat, they may replace it with sugar or some okay. sort of additive to replace the taste, to make it taste good. Mm. So sometimes if you look at a food label, the lower fat ones have a longer uh, ingredients list than mm -hmm. just our regular because they're adding something to make it taste better. Yes, so yes. I personally buy regular of everything and watch the portion, just kind of drizzle a salad dressing on. I mean, you can think of all kinds of, I mean, mayo or mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm trying, you know, different things. Uh, it's just all about still portion because okay. overall that food isn't incredibly healthy. So we just got to watch how we're having it. So again, it just kind of depends. So don't think that you can have a whole, whole lot more just because it's reduced fat. Cause it doesn't mean there's nothing in there at all. So, okay. You're just, to, just to let you know, your chat is blowing up. You're making people hungry. They got a lot oh. of questions for you at the end. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. Well then I'll get, I know I look at food all day too. And my friends always want to know, they're like, you're always talking about food. I'm like, yeah, that's all I do all day. What you do? Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Let's see what we got. Okay. Another example about low fat. Okay. So this wheat thin is a great example. We have original wheat thins and we have reduced fat. Let's look at the original. We have five grams of fat for 16 pieces. Mm -hmm. And the reduced fat, we have 3.5 grams for 16 pieces. So we're saving 1.5 grams of fat. Mm. Choose whichever you like, but just know that it's not, I mean, it's not a substantial difference. So if you prefer the taste of one or the other, like by all means, but I feel the reduced fat can sometimes be deceiving where we think we can have more. So we might mm -hmm. sit there with an open box of wheat thins and not realize we just ate half of it. So just know low fat isn't always calorie free. So right. 
Mm -hmm. Every patient I talk to, we focus on portions. I never tell anyone to sit there with an open container of anything, unless it's maybe baby carrots. Okay. But, no, but I mean, unless, you know, if it's chips, popcorn, even mm -hmm. nuts, I mean, everything adds up. So, which we'll talk about a few other things as far as nut. Oh, I see. I, I see a few chats popping up, but Tasha had talked about that too when we ran through this, how the carbs are the same right. too. So as our diabetics counting our carbs, yeah. I mean, the sodium, but again, it's the same, the same. Yeah. 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 All right. Next slide. Let's see what we got. Ne oh, okay. So percent daily values. So there's a few reasons to use this. Salt is one that I really push for looking at this because it's not always the easiest to sit there and add up all our salt per day, of course. So if we're looking at the percent daily value, a low source of salt or any nutrient would be a percent daily value of 5% or less. So fat, protein, I mean, any any food, I any, um, I'm sorry, anything on the nutrition label, if it's less than 5%, it's a low value. It's a high source of that item if it's 20% or more. Mm. So fiber is a good one if you want a lot of fiber, protein. But if our fat and our salt is up, then that's not the best. So at my next slide, I have a couple of examples of how mm -hmm. we can use this. So nuts, these are some smokehouse almonds that I personally really like. And a lot of people think they can't have like the flavored nuts because of the sodium. And mm -hmm. I like to nip that in the bud because these smokehouse ones are so good. For 28 nuts, the percent daily value is only 7%. So that's a great snack. If you would have that with a piece of fruit, there's no salt in fruit. So that's a low salt snack because we're on the lower end. Mm -hmm. Now, fat. I see there's 20% total fat, but if we look right below it, saturated fat, our bad fats is only mm -hmm. 6%. Okay. So almonds or any nut really, those are our healthy fats. So most of the fat is coming from that unsaturated fat. So even though there's fat in nuts, it's not the same type of fat as a Snickers or French fries or something like that. So that's some good ways to kind of look at the percent daily value for the Kashi, the fiber. It's a lot, forty percent. That's a lot of fiber. Mm -hmm. um, but so I mean, that's a high amount. Protein is twenty percent. That's a lot for cereal. So. Again, if you don't want to ever add up like I want, you know, my 2000 milligrams of sodium or whatnot, her percent daily value can kind of give you an idea of something's considered high in that um, nutrient or low. Okay, so just for while you still have that slide up and you kind of top, you kind of tip to it, good fat versus bad fat. Because when we see this saturated trans fat, polyunsaturated, which ones should we really be kind of looking at to make sure we're either under that daily value or over that daily value for the good versus bad? Saturated and trans are your two bad fats. That's what gotcha. affects your bad cholesterol. Okay. And most of that is from, the majority of the time it's from processed stuff. So okay. think um, high fat meats like bacon and sausage, mm -hmm. think the fats from a burger at a uh, like a full fat burger that we get from a fast food restaurant mm. um, fats from like the French fries because always tell people poor potatoes potatoes themselves are not a problem because a baked potato potato has no fat but once we fry it and coat it with salt and it becomes a French fry well now it's not the best but mm. if you have a baked potato Okay. We're okay with fat. So now that we've processed the potato to make it, or even potato chips, mm -hmm. like now that has, so think of things, the more processed something is, mm -hmm. usually the more stuff is added, like Velveeta cheese that mm -hmm. is shelf stable for years. Yeah. It's full of fat and salt versus our cheese that actually will go bad. That's refrigerated. So mm -hmm. our processed stuff is usually the worst. So all the convenience foods that we're turning to more nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
So yeah, your saturated and your trans are the two fats that are we want to try to keep as low as possible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. More claims. Sorry, I think this is the last slide about claims. Okay, no sugar added, another tricky one. So no sugar added. This is only if sugar is being added to the processing process, <laughs> to the process, sorry. So let's think canning peaches. Well, again, fruit is um, a natural uh, carbohydrate. So it has naturally occurring sugar in it. So if you would look at a food label, there is carbohydrates and sugar on canned peaches, but no sugar added means they didn't add any sugar to that versus the one covered in heavy syrup. They added sugar to that one. Um, so no sugar added ice cream. If you look at the food label, milk has lactose. Milk is a sugar. So there's still some sugar and carbs in no sugar added ice cream. They're just not, again, adding sugar. So food labels are important to, again, look at depending on what we need to focus on, especially diabetics. Mm -hmm. Sugar-free, less than 0.5 grams per serving. And artificial sweeteners, so we don't get much information about those whenever it does say no sugar added. So this... Vanilla bean, I think this is an ice cream, this vanilla bean ice cream. Mm -hmm. So it says no sugar added, but if we look in the ingredients, it talks about sucralose and I, there's another sugar substitute in there. So mm -hmm. while there's no added sugar, they're going to sweeten it with a sugar substitute. But I do like to put in that or put in my little plug that Sugar substitutes are okay for us to eat in moderation. All the webinars that I listen to and the educational research that I do on it, it really just shows that we need to consume thousands of packets of like a Splenda or Sweet and Low or whatnot per day for any type of damage or any type of issue. So to put a Sweet and Low in an unsweetened tea or in a coffee or to have you know, if you want a no sugar added ice cream with a sugar substitute, that's okay for us to have. So our diet soda, um, you know, you're at least saving 150 calories is my thought. But so um, just know that the sugar substitutes in moderation, I mean, mm -hmm. it's okay for us to have. So if it says zero sugar, does it does not mean sugar free. It just means it's low on that DV value. Yes. If it says no sugar, yeah. Okay. But you, I'd have to, we'd have to see what it is. So check and, the label. Oh, like, yeah, check the label. Yeah. I was about to say, and sometimes things will do that. Like, God, what am I trying? I mean, potato chips, no sugar. Well, mm -hmm. no, correct. There is no sugar in potato chips, but they're salt and fat and they're still a carb. I mean, I just made, I don't think they have that as a claim, but I'm trying to think like, again, we just have to look at the claims or the mm -hmm. food label, but mm -hmm. I feel some things will try to steer us in a direction yeah. like that yes. to yes. try to make it seem healthier. Like I've seen something mm -hmm. like Twizzlers or something and they're like fat for, or low fat. And I'm like, well, but I mean, it's straight sugar. I mean, maybe low, I mean, I don't know, it's funny. So you just got to look at, food labels. Um, okay. okay. All right. Let's see what we have next. I think we go into meal planning. Okay. Awesome. So Ooh. a whole lot about food labels while you're looking in the grocery store, getting ready for meal planning. Mm -hmm. Meal planning is one of the biggest things I talk to people about because it's just, I guess, kind of what holds a lot of people back. They either don't know where to start, don't know just where to go from there. So a I always try to focus on keeping it simple. One suggestion is start with your hardest meal. For some people that's lunch, like packing a lunch, mm -hmm. avoid going out, things like that. Some people it's the evening meal. If it's cooking for your family, that's what my, that's when I, when I got to worry about three other people, dinner, supper is my hardest meal. So always think about finding some recipes. You can try new ones gather old ones, ask around. I've asked for simple, me and some coworkers kind of did 
a simple recipe exchange because I don't have time to cook gravies and do all this fancy stuff. We need something simple. So we did simple recipe exchanges. Um, and so once you have an idea of things you might want to fix that week, well, now we need to go buy, you know, stock your fridge, stock your freezer, have things available. So I'm going to go through some of that. But I guess the biggest thing is, I mean, we need to get the food. You know, people just are like, I don't have anything in my house. So it's like, well, let's go. Let's go shopping. <laughs> so let's see what I have next about um, some of my meal planning tips. Oh, I use this personally, stick it on the refrigerator so people can see what's for supper since everybody got to ask me. And we have just because again, supper is the meal I got to worry about everyone else. So that's our hardest meal. So think about your week. If Tuesday is a kid's practice, Thursday night is a meeting, I don't know, maybe Monday and Wednesday fix a meal. And then Tuesday and Thursday could be leftovers Friday out. I mean, something as simple as that. It doesn't have to be a home cooked meal every night, but we're just trying to avoid the drive through type of fast food, pizza, just a lot of the processed stuff where all that saturated fat and bad fat adds up. So, um, and yeah, so this is a, I really like this one versus, I mean, some people like, you know, breakfast, lunch, and supper. If that helps hold you accountable, by all means. And when you're making this, okay. do you actually discuss with the house or is this something you kind of figure out on your own? Well, so, I mean, my kids are four and oh. seven. So we don't have a, and then my husband, if he wants to eat, he'll eat. If he wants, I mean, he's going to eat it. He's fine with a sandwich every night, but I, the, I mean, I need a vegetable. I need, so he just eats gotcha. whatever I, I thankfully you. he's not. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So grocery shopping tips. So of course, always go with a list. Um, of course, if we know we're going to make, I have an example later about taco night. If we know we're going to make taco night, well then make sure that we have, you know, the lean ground meat, the taco kit, the guacamole, whatever. So go with your list, keep a running list at home. We do that here. You know, if we're running low on certain fruit or cereals or, you know, whatnot, keep a running list at home. If you feel you go to the grocery store and you just can't resist the powdered donuts when you walk down the bread aisle, I don't know, try grocery pickup. Um, I do that a lot mostly because I shouldn't say this, but I don't like grocery shopping. I just really don't. So I do grocery pickup and on my lunch break, I'll go to Walmart and they just load it in my trunk and it's so nice, but you just check off, you know, order everything you need. It's so nice and time saves time. And then the store brands. So again, this kind of falls back with everything. It doesn't have to be that expensive. If instead of bird's eye or whatever green giant frozen vegetables, get the great value, get Target up and up, get an Albertsons brand. I mean, it's still frozen broccoli. It's still, so it doesn't always have to be the, you know, um, other fancy brands. So try the store brands um, for canned, you know, other things. So don't forget about those. Okay. All right, so here is some ideas. So make meals easier. So that first picture is a sheet pan. We have chicken, white potatoes, gasp, but it's okay. Remember, they're not fried. We can still do white potatoes and broccoli. So we have a protein from our chicken, the potato is our carb, and the broccoli is our vegetable. Season it, put it in the oven, a one sheet pan. Feel free to change up vegetables. We can do Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, asparagus, carrots, what, you know, but uh, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, different things, but there's a lot of one sheet type of pans, if recipes, if you would search it. So mm -hmm. that can be something very simple. Um, the crock pot. I'm a huge fan of a crock pot. I actually used it this week to do a roast in the crock pot. And I did some um, red potatoes and I always have a vegetable. I'm, oh, broccoli. We did 
that's a steamed broccoli. Um, so, but this one looks fabulous with potatoes, chicken, mm -hmm. carrots, and green beans. And I tell a lot of my patients to Google easy crock pot dinners and mm. there's tons of stuff that comes up and there's a lot of great soups that come up and the dietitian in me always needs a vegetable with my meals. So a lot of those soups are carb and protein. It might be a chicken noodle or a taco or a chicken tortilla. So I'll always do a side salad with our soup in the like the crock pot and then we have leftovers we can freeze some so i love to do like a soup and salad type of thing so, so speaking Kathy, of leftover yeah question sorry so this is again i'm just circling back to i live in south louisiana where we like stuff seasoned these are i feel like these are healthier with being oven created or crock pot how heavy or light should we also be with our seasoning because we still want to make it palatable yeah, are so seasoned, I, are there seasoned substitutes. Maybe that's maybe that's yeah. okay. I always recommend getting a drawer full of the herbs and spices separate. I mean, of course, we can have a Tony's or a the salt free Tony's, mm -hmm. but if we would season with you know cracked black pepper, garlic mm -hmm. powder, mm -hmm. onions, mm -hmm. um those natural Rosemary. flavors, I gotcha, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about like parsley and mm -hmm. cayenne pepper and all that. If you look at the food label, there's no salt in any of those that are individual. So like if you would wanna do some fish with like lemon juice, cracked pepper mm -hmm. and um, parsley on it. Um, and even a little sprinkle of salt. So the majority of people get their salt from either the salt in the restaurants because they are out of control or from processed foods. Mm. So think again, those convenience foods, like maybe a hamburger helper, a canned soup, a hot dog, that meat has a lot of salt. So having fresh fish with a fresh potato and some frozen green beans, it's not really a high salt meal there at all. So if we would mm. sprinkle a little salt on even our potato and our fish, along with, again, the cracked pepper and the parsley mm -hmm. and lemon. So, mm -hmm. um, but I always love to say, you know, the onions and bell peppers and garlic powder and minced garlic, and there's still other seasonings to flavor it with. So, okay. and so like with, um, and sometimes you see these cooking shows where they'll use different salts, like the sea salt or the Himalayan salt you know, that are to me a little saltier, but seems like it allows you to use less. I'm, I'm not sure if that is what their intent is, but. It's the same. So okay. yeah, okay. sea salt, Himalayan, it's all still sodium. So okay. yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no difference. It's okay. still sodium. It just okay. comes from different sources. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Still light, lightly salted people. We're still lightly sprinkling that <laughs> Because if you would pull up again, nutrition facts at restaurants, I mean, their appe wow. uh, appetizers have more salt than you need in your day. I mean, Thank it's just you. shocking. Thank so you. if you do a whole meal with a little bit salt and again, all these herbs and spices. So the potatoes I did this week, I tossed them in some olive oil. I did like pepper, oh, I'm uh, parsley. A little bit of oregano or something like that and then um just a little like a little bit of salt nothing crazy oh and garlic powder okay. and just tossed them in that and stuck it in the oven and i saw a really good tip um as soon as they come out of the oven to put a little like acid on them of some sort like a white wine vinegar <laughs> which we didn't have but i had balsamic and it just called for a tea a tablespoon or two and they were delicious but they were crispy and they weren't uh, but they weren't very salted. You know, I use other herbs and stuff. So, okay. So now tell me this, cause I'm not a cook, um, but I, I like what you're saying. It's a little intimidating. I go to that shelf for olive oil and they got 10 brands or 10, you know, virgin oil or the, the straight from Italy, or, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm truly a novice when it comes to using seasonings. I'm very basic. So tell me how to not make that an intimidating experience. Cause I, I don't, I don't know which one to choose. Buy the great value extra virgin olive oil. Okay. 
Thank it's you. <laughs> okay. It's as simple as that. But uh, olive oil is better than the some of the other oils. Um, it's the because olives is a good fat for us. Um, okay. It's one of our healthy fats. But mm -hmm. again, it's not calorie free. I mean, a tablespoon is still 120 calories. I mean, we still have to watch our portions. We still don't want to dip a loaf of bread in a cup of oil, even though it sounds fabulous. So we still want to watch portions. But um, I mean, that's what I do. I don't get the fancy ones. They're okay. a lot more expensive. And it's really all still the same ingredients. Okay. Really? I mean, so, so like I olive just, oil versus canola oil or vegetable oil, is there something we need to oh, so like, on that? I mean, olive and pecan, I think I have this on a slide coming up or two, because that's a nut oh, oil. I'm sorry, in a minute, jump up. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. No, that's okay. That's some of our healthier oils then okay. I don't know why it's called vegetable oil. It drives me. It's so bizarre because it's <laughs> not the, it's the worst oil. It's just weird. I'm like, I, I don't know, but the <laughs> vegetable and canola, some of those are, um, they're, they just aren't as good with the healthy fats, like some of the, the olive oil and pecan, but everything's still in moderation. I mean, if, like I said, if we're still coating what I mean, I love my bread example. I don't know, just dipping a loaf of bread and all kind of oil. I mean, it's like, so we still just have to be mindful of portions when it comes to that. I'm hearing tag words here. Look at the label and portion control. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay. okay, so leftovers. I mentioned that earlier. That third picture shows leftovers. I like to tell people when you're picking up from supper that night, especially if lunch is a hard meal, Put it in a container right then and there so that you don't have to do it the next morning. So that way it's already in your container. That's what I used to do when I was in the office. Grab it and go. It's one less step to do in the morning. Um, if you portion out your little bit and then still have a whole pot full, whatever. But leftovers are fabulous. And then you can still stick some in the freezer, say if it's a big crock pot meal and you, cause even my people that live by themselves, I say, shoot, do a crock pot, eat on it for two nights, stick it in the freezer. You'll have a soup next week or something next week. I mean, let's utilize leftovers in the freezer. So this picture here, let's say, um, of the frozen, let's say broccoli was on sale and we bought a few, <laughs> I don't know. You can maybe bag it and freeze some um, and then cook whatever you need that night. But, you know, freezing is a great way to preserve versus like canned or things that have a lot of salt. Okay. Let me go to the next slide. I'm looking at my time. I know. I Okay. Let me go to the next slide. Sorry. So I can get through. So shop the perimeter. All right. I'll put some pictures up here. Some examples. So you, you always hear shop the perimeter, but you still got to be mindful of what's in the perimeter. <laughs> so limit the, you know, high fatty cheeses, that cream cheese, hot, the full fat milk. So by the check mark, we have, you know, there's the lighter cheese, the Greek yogurt, low fat milk. There's even 1% type of chocolate milks, things like that. So, um, you know, some of these lighter ones, you're saving again, some fat. It's again, not always fat free. It's not, but if you want to cut your fat in half, that sour cream could be half the calorie, half the fat than the regular. Sometimes I buy the part skim cheese because that's using the lower fat milk than the full fat. Just some ways to cut little calories and carbs if you can. But again, all this is goes bad. It's not like it's shelf stable and full of a whole bunch of process stuff. So um, that's, so we like to shop the perimeter. Okay, next slide goes into protein meats. So the ones I've kind of mentioned earlier, bacon and sausage and hot dogs and bologna, there's just a lot of salt in these, unfortunately. Um, all protein, everything on this slide right here has no carbohydrates. So diabetics, my blood sugar people, there's no carbs in protein, but of course the salt and fat is there. So that picture under limit, there's a lot of marbling in that ribeye, it looks like. So turkey sausage, turkey, I do turkey breakfast sausage in the mornings. I really like that. Um, the deli turkey has less fat than say our bologna, you know, chicken, 
This pork tenderloin, not all pork is always fat. It just depends on the cut. And here's a loin, it's lean. So we can always have a pork tenderloin. But so again, with meats, we're just aiming for the leaner cuts majority of the time. I don't expect us to never have bacon again in our life, but um, we just wanna do lean meats the majority of the time. Okay. So if I get okay. lean bacon, I can do that? There's still salt in the turkey bacon, unfortunately, um, but you are saving some calories and some fat. Okay. But same with turkey sausage. There's still salt in turkey sausage. So, okay. I mean, I do, again, I do turkey sausage. We just can't, we can't win it all. We can't be completely salt free. So we can't get too stressed about all of that. So, okay. yeah. but turkey okay. bacon will be better fat and calorie wise. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and now we have produce. Okay, so of course, by the check mark, our vegetables, our fruits, fabulous, amazing. But also in that section will be, let's say that blue cheese dressing. Um, some of those that are the refrigerated ones um, are really high in calories and fat. Also, so that fruit juice, I feel like they kind of put like that naked or all natural or what, whatever one's right there for people to think they're healthier, but they're still straight juice, really, I guess, with, which is a whole bunch of oranges, pineapples, apples, whatever, just squeezed into the juice. So it's not carb free, it's not calorie free. The other dietitian here, we call her the juice police. She is so adamant about not wanting anyone to get their calories from juice because mm -hmm. I wish we had the food label on that. But something as little as that little food, um, I'm sorry, that little fruit juice, mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably like 300 calories or something. I mean, it adds up so mm -hmm. much. So yes, you'll get some vitamins where a soda you won't, but the mm -hmm. calories and carbs are pretty much identical to sodas. So in the juice your fruit. Mm -hmm. Oh, so should, should we not be juicing? We should just go for the can of Coke. I mean, if you're going to do it. <laughs> Well, well, <laughs> now that's all. Well, okay, no, okay, no. So let's do orange juice over Coke because at least the orange juice you're getting vitamin C. So, okay, 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 <laughs> but okay. one cup, so eight ounces. Well, the calorie, the carbs are exact same. Twelve ounces of juice is forty-five grams of carbs, which is exactly what is a can of soda. Forty-five grams of carbs, which is mm -hmm. three serving sizes. Okay. So, so, so then the think about the sugar. Maybe there that. may be some, yeah. I mean, yeah. Cause it's sugar and yeah. Yeah. Unless you get, now you can look at the trop 50 orange juice. You can look at diet cranberry juice. There's light there's, okay. Okay. um, but your cranberry juice is a little more concentrated. It's like a fourth of a cup is considered one serving, which that's a, I mean, that's a sip. Then your apple and orange, pineapple, half a cup is considered one serving. So I try to say limit the juice. Um, now, the chips, the banana chips and mango chips I see at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's a, just a whole bunch of fruit dehydrated. So think about it that way. I mean, it's still, I feel like I'm saying all these bad things when I should, <laughs> like, I'm like, it's still carbs and calories, but again, I guess having a banana chip might be better than having a bag of Doritos. But okay. I guess the biggest thing is just focusing on like the processing. Think about how many bananas might now be in that banana bag of chips that it might be easy to eat 30 of them. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And how that can add up. So oh. the moral of my story, sorry, I got a little chatty with that. Um, Cause I know I have more to cover is that just watch what's also in the produce section because um, it isn't always a low calorie option. Mm. Okay, next slide. So now in the aisles, um, they can have some stuff too. So the cereal section, grits, um, it is not high in fat. It's not high in sugar. I tell people it's an okay breakfast option. I mean, it's much better than going and have a donut or cinnamon rolls or pop tarts. So grits, there's oatmeal, there's cereals with whole grains and fiber. So cereal section can be okay. I mean, of course, we're listing the good ones, not something like Cocoa Puffs and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, 
oils. Here's the olive oil and the pecan oil, the two that mm -hmm. we put up here that are your best two from the oil group. Okay. And then herbs and spices, as you can see, I can't really read them all, but again, at least it's like, so instead of having these all mixed together, you can have all kind of herbs and spices where there's probably no salt. I see in the cayenne pepper, turmeric, or that's just that. So you can still season your foods. Seasoned doesn't always have to mean super salty. Gotcha. Okay. And one question okay. on the oil is what about avocado oil? Is that also a healthy alternative? Alternate. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a good okay. one. That's a good Perfect. one. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, frozen foods. Utilize those frozen foods. Okay, so I've done this mashed cauliflower because I don't know how to make that. And I bought this one and it's like the bacon and chive and it's really, really good. Um, so I do a lot of there's a frozen Brussels sprouts one. It's like roasting Brussels sprouts and I just toss them in olive oil, a little bit of seasoning and stick it in the oven. Um, but here's these salmon fillets. And then I'm the queen of frozen dinners. I like to eat them a lot for my lunches with a little small side salad I put together, but healthy choice and lean cuisine have come a long way with their taste and flavor and options and they're not as high in salt as people think they're better in salt than if you would go to a fast food restaurant mm -hmm. now canned vegetables i mean if you need them you know have some on stock it's still again better than if we're going to get a burger and fries if we're whipping up a meal together with some vegetables there just i still rinse mine off it's habit i just do it i mean i rinse mine off so, you know, have some canned foods on stock. And then again, the nuts, like I had mentioned earlier, where um, nuts are a fabulous snack or addition to a salad or something like that. A question on the canned foods, because I was always yeah. told that they were so high in salt because of the preservatives. So you're saying yeah. that it is okay, we just have to make sure we rinse them off before we are uh, digesting or cooking or whatever? So fresh is always best. Frozen <laughs> is... Well, sometimes if it's like frozen by itself, like if it's just broccoli frozen, mm -hmm. there's no added salt there. Sometimes some of those, like I've seen a green giant Tuscan broccoli, there's some, but I feel like it goes frozen, fresh, canned. So, but having canned green beans to me with a well-routed meal, like a lean protein and a carb mm -hmm. is better than us going to um, have a Whopper and fries and a Coke. So, I mean, we gotta, gotta think about the whole picture. So um, I don't always use canned, but I do keep like canned carrots and green beans and stuff on hand in case we're kind of in a pinch and I need something, but I still do rinse them and stuff like that. But it's better than, again, um, French fries. <laughs> yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, okay. Okay, so cost comparison grocery store versus fast food. So I had broken down what it cost for say a taco night with lean ground meat, the taco kit. I forgot if I had added in, I don't know if it was beans or if it was rice, slice of tomato, whatnot. And then Taco Bell, um, I had pulled a couple like meals or something. So when you have like a whole pound or two, I forgot what I priced it with of ground meat and the taco kit that serves, let's say it's 12 shells. And, you know, of course people might eat more than one shell, but this just kind of goes to show the price really isn't going to be, it's not like you're paying all this extra money to have taco night at home. And the ground meat at Taco Bell is not going to be lean. You know, they're probably having a salty um, cheese. And again, you can control like having a vegetable on the side, some avocado. So that was just my example there. And then the next one is a burger night at the house. So of course you can buy the lean ground meat, turkey ground meat. You can buy pre-packaged burgers, you know, whatnot. Have lettuce, have tomato, uh, buy some frozen French fries, bake them. Then Wendy's, I had looked at some of their meal deals and it was about like eight dollars for a meal deal of like a burger fries and a drink so it just so 
it's not always cheaper to eat out. I feel a lot of people are starting to realize that, that they're coming to me more about help with meal planning because they realize mm -hmm. they're spending a lot as they're eating out. So it mm -hmm. isn't always cheaper. And like I said, I mean, the biggest thing is at the fast food restaurants, they're not choosing lean ground meat. They're choosing the high fat ground meat where burger night, you can control your, you can do your leaner ground meat. Absolutely. Okay. So again, on beverages. Um, so just again, water's best by the check mark. I tried to make water a little bigger because I do want to try to say water is best, but having a diet soda is okay. I mean, I, I, had, I put Dr. Pepper because that's my personal favorite is diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> okay. um, I don't like tea, but I know there's the diet teas out there. You can do Powerade Zero, Gatorade G2 or whatever they're called, save you some calories. I personally also love Mio or Crystal Light, great mm -hmm. value brand, Target brand, whatever, the water enhancers. Mm -hmm. If you like just lemon or a cucumber in your water, awesome. But um, all the beverages uh, by the check mark, of course, add up. So if you're in a restaurant and you get a regular tea, a regular lemonade, I mean, you might be drinking a few hundred calories just by your beverage. So that's a great way to cut it out mm -hmm. and switch it for something healthier. Okay, I think we're finally coming to the end. Sorry, I, I told you I had a lot to give y'all. So there is some nutrition apps that we love. So if you really want to see like, maybe you're not sure where your problem area is. Is it snacking? Is it the meals? Is it you just don't know? Um, these are some great apps that you can download. So My Fitness Pal, Fat Secret, and Lose It are like food diary trackers. So those are good ones. Calorie King is a food search. So if you just want to type in a boiled egg, it'll come up and it'll tell you what's in that. And then Oshner Eat Fit, it's around the state. There's certain restaurants that have this um, Oshner Eat Fit um, stamp where it means their menu is like um, healthy enough. There's certain claims like whole grains or vegetables, things like that. Okay. This, is, this okay. has been great. This has been great. I just have a couple things that I want to make sure that we at least touch on. Um, yes. Energy okay. food, because sometimes we're really sluggish. We're just tired, probably because we're not getting good sleep. I'm not sure. <laughs> but what are some energy foods that kind of can help jumpstart us or give us that extra boost that we're needing during the day? I feel it's just healthy eating in general. So mm -hmm. whenever I talk to patients, one of the things that makes me happiest is the way they feel. They tell me they may not have a big significant weight change or whatnot, but they're like, man, I am feeling better. Cause like mm -hmm. stopping by the gas food, gas food, gas station and getting a corn dog or getting pizza or eating out two, three times a day. It's just those heavy fattening, salty mm -hmm. foods. Yeah. So we always start with little goals. Like again, whatever is the, your hardest meal, like pack a lunch cook a supper, but a big goal I really push is one vegetable daily. Figure out how to get a vegetable in, whether it's with your lunch, at a snack, I don't care if you're doing a serving of cucumbers, carrots, or with your evening meal, make that a habit, and then we can transition into something else, stopping the regular beverages, and let's switch to diet, but I feel once we start eating more vegetables, more fruits, maybe carbohydrates coming from something like whole grains and oatmeal and popcorn versus a bag of chips at night or an ice cream at night. We just all around feel better because we're per fueling our body with more nutritious food. Okay. So what about cheat days? I've been on this diet. I've been doing well. I've been eating well. Is there such a thing or is it recommended to truly have a cheat day or a cheat meal? Yeah. So I don't even like the word diet because this isn't a diet. It's a lifestyle. We should Absolutely. always think about having our vegetables. We should always think about the fact that we can have rice and gravy with a lean protein and a vegetable. It's not that we're never going to eat rice again. I mean, red beans and rice. Rice is low fat. There's no sugar added to it. Mm -hmm. Beans is full of fiber, protein. Mm -hmm. That meal itself is not 
awful, but think about ever. I mean, but if we're having maybe sodas or for breakfast, we had five donuts, then we're going to have king cake later. And then a like, it's kind of like the whole, the junky food a lot. So I, I have a lot of my eater outers, um, like they're like, I eat out all the time and I don't want to stop my Chick-fil-A. And I'm like, well, let's make every Friday or like on the weekend or something like still treat yourself to that and we're and just not have it five days a week maybe mm -hmm. just one or two where you're still doing better because let's be realistic you know i mean so but the majority of the time let's do well um so same with like if someone has a birthday coming up this weekend and on sunday we're gonna have cake like not to stress out so much that i can't have cake but also i hope all week you weren't having brownies every night either you know like maybe we're having a piece of fruit as a snack at night or something so again it's more just of like the whole picture trying to do well the majority of the time so then we can have that piece of cake or whatever does that okay. you know so mm -hmm. trying to think of it as a diet and things that you cannot have it's just okay. more limiting so i love donuts but i don't need them every day so i don't but when my husband goes and gets them for the kids once every couple of weeks or something yeah i mean because i love them but i'm not gonna get donuts every day so <laughs> and is is there a such thing like I'm, I'm glad you said like the the evening like it's watermelon season coming up so i tend to try to shift my thoughts to my dessert being watermelon is there such a thing as eating too much of like a watermelon um that's is you know it's, i like the sugar i like the sweeter versus the little more not so sweet but is there yeah. uh, is there a limit that i should not try to overindulge or you know if you're not a diabetic, I really don't try to talk bad about fruit like that and okay. say that there's a limit, but for my diabetics, of course, especially say if they're on insulin or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. fruit is a carb. It's a naturally has natural sugar. So it's mm -hmm. not carb free. So a whole watermelon, a bushel of grapes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm a thing of pineapple, you know, I mean, it will add up. So it's one of those where like, we still want to be aware of portions. Um, but if you're not diabetic, I mean, I would much rather you eat two bowls of watermelon or grapes or apple slices, than mm -hmm. open the bag of Cheetos. So mm -hmm. again, I mean, you got to weigh out your options, but it is a great, it is a great snack. So I hate to say like, watch it but i mean it, it it can add up yeah okay i, I just want i just want to thank you i think this has been absolutely like i said mind-blowing i knew it was going to be um because we just have to change our mindset the journey is is forever and we want to make sure that we don't get stuck in the daily um minutia of it but make sure we keep a bigger picture and make sure that this is a life changing yes. as you have mentioned so many different times look the labels y'all read the labels see what we're ingesting make sure we are not being persuaded or distracted by uh tag words that are moving us in our mindset in a different way so i just want to thank you you have been absolutely uh phenomenal the information has been tremendously helpful so we want to remind everybody that these are going to be on those videos these are going to be able to be replayed on our respective pages blue cross blue shield as well as gamete omega alpha kappa alpha um the chat the chat room has I been blown up Catherine, it has been blown I have up. one closing thought because of course i can talk about this forever and it gets right. it gets me excited so over the past two years um me and laura the other dietitian have been asked to film some facebook lives on blue okay. crosses facebook page okay. and we have different topics we went into the grocery store we've covered a day in our life like we packed up what we eat and brought it to a kitchen and displayed it out we've done salt uh different topics but blue cross and blue shield of louisiana has a facebook page and when you're on the page it's under videos and you can't miss it because it's there's a little carrot and a little lettuce. And, um, but there's more on there where we dive into some of this, of course, but also we go through the protein section, we go through the freezer section. I pull out some of the 
um, meals, those like lean cuisines I eat, read the salt mm -hmm. compared to mm -hmm. other things. So I like to tell people about those too, because they, we go through the cereal aisle. That one is mind blowing. Some of the cereal and the portion size. Um, so yeah, so Blue Cross's Facebook page is, um, has videos so you can hear more of us and check that out. Yeah. And the YouTube channel, as it's on your screen right now. Uh, the YouTube DCBS channel has okay. some of our videos. Yes. Yeah. It does, yeah. It has some of our videos too. Yep. All right. We just want to thank you all again. Thank you for this partnership with Blue Cross. We want to thank your team for allowing us the space to share your uh, mission with it and making sure our community is educated. Um, we just think this was a phenomenal time. And I hope you all got something as well. I've been writing notes. I've been writing a lot of notes. I, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> So thank you, Ms. Lang Ms. Langua. I do appreciate it. Yes, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I'm sorry I said I gave a lot, but it's like I no, want to tell I want to tell it all. I don't know what I want. I don't want to keep it in. <laughs> it was perfect. I thank you guys, and right. we hope you have a great, fantastic day, everybody. Happy. Bye, y'all.